Hey, and welcome back to another PyBytes video on refactoring. And today I wanna look at how you can refactor a set of functions into a class. Now I'm not a big fan starting with classes. Like I definitely think you should always start with functions and only use classes when they make sense. Um, and usually that's when you wanna keep a sort of state or you see an opportunity to better encapsulate your data and behavior. Uh, and such a case actually arised here, right? So here you see, a dictionary and four functions, and they have a bunch of repeated arguments, right? And that usually is a hint that you can probably better group this in a class. And there's another um, repetition going on. So the three out of four functions use the other function. So setup connection is used in the other three functions. So that's also a hint that, hey, maybe we can do this setup once when uh, we instantiate a class. And thirdly, it's um, working with the API config dictionary, which is now in the global scope, which is not really secure. So let's uh, see how we can refactor this uh, into a class and address all these three things. Let's uh, first make a backup, because I'm, of course, going to post this code later. Okay, so let's start with making a class. Let's uh, move this down. And a class has a constructor. And I'm going to pass in config, user ID, and session token. And I'm going to make instance variables, right? So config is that dictionary we saw before and user ID and session token are used in multiple functions. And this way, I'm also separating the config from user data. So that's why I took that approach of using three variables or three instance variables, right? So now to make those functions methods, I can just indent them. And now they're inside the class. And to make them part of the class, uh, I need to start the arguments with self, and then those are effectively instance methods, right? So let's continue with, um, instead of passing in repeated arguments, make those, use the, um, the um, instance variables. And I forgot to do one thing here. We actually not interested in the config, but we are interested in the two values we're going to get from the config, which is API URL and API key. So API URL is API URL, and then API key is API key. Okay, uh, so config is just an intermediate variable. Okay, so now I can clean up a whole bunch of things because instead of passing around these variables constantly, I can just, just use the instant variable. So can remove all this and call the instance variables. It's jumping around a bit. That's my Vim. And let's also, I'll fix that in a bit. So first let's get rid of these. And actually, we don't need those arguments either because the setup connection uses all instance variables. So this literally becomes a call weighted arguments. Same here, same here. It is still duplicated. I will address that in a little bit. I just want to go one step at a time. So here, user ID, session token, instance variables, data is still passed in because that varies among the method calls. Self user ID and self session token. And here the same self user ID, self session token. And yeah, so here we get to that undefined setup connection. And that's because it thinks now that I'm 
calling a function, but we actually made this a method because this is now in the class. Um, so when we call is um, a method, we need to do that with self. And I have an undefined name session token on line 14. And that's because I forgot to reference the instance variables here. And now we should be good. Um, so how to use this? I can make an instance. A fake user ID and a fake session token string. And another nice example is that um, your IDE will autocomplete. So I can exactly see what's in this uh, class. So I have some instance variables and I have three, four methods, fetch data, process data, save data, and setup connection. Uh, if you don't want to expose the setup connection, which I think is reasonable to do, then I can give it an underscore and then it's considered internal. And now if I type client dot, it should be hidden. Okay, so let's call the methods. Notice that this is now a nice container. So that's your abstraction. That's how it's better encapsulated. So I can do fetch data. I can do process data. That needs some data and I can do save data and that also needs it some data so this should start printing so we have three times a setup so every time we set up something then we call the method which prints setup second method setup third method so you see a bit of a duplication here um, interestingly if setup connection would take a little bit of time this repetition is is really not needed so we can actually move this into the constructor and then we do it once when we make the instance right and then i can remove this one i can remove this one and this is so again this leads to less code less repetition but also if setup connection would be slower for some reason this will also save time make the code faster and then when i run it again i get only one setup and then the three methods right so this is pretty neat and slim um, and yeah, I, with that, I also addressed that duplication issue of calling the same method three times. So this to me looks pretty good. And I think it's a nice candidate to refactor into a class. Now I wouldn't start with a class, but yeah, if again, you need to keep state. Now, of course, here's, uh, this is not really state because we just print in these methods. So sorry for the bit contrived example, but this is just to make a point. But uh, imagine that some network call happens and you have to persist it. Um, this class instance now keeps that state, right? Um, and yeah, you see that the function signatures are now shorter. And um, yeah, this is pretty, pretty clean. So let me know in the comments below if you hit this type of refactoring or scenario. And also let me know in the comments below if you want to see other videos on refactoring. I'm always uh, happy to dive in and explain it on the channel. If you like this video, uh, give it a like, subscribe below for more content. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.